All righty. Stopping the share there. Okay, well, welcome everyone. We have some guests here, so I'm going to take a little bit of time to um, have us go around and introduce our guests. So, Craig, I will start with you if you could introduce Waylon. Okay, uh, good morning, everybody. I want to introduce Waylon Brune. He's uh, a guest from Kalaheo. I've known Waylon and his family for many years, and he's checking out our club, getting more information. So, wave your hand, Waylon. So, everyone sees you. All right. Welcome. Welcome. And did Mike Curtis leave? Yeah, no, Mike Curtis right here. There you are. <laughs> Tech Spear. Tech Spear used to be a icon surfer, iconic surfer at Pakala's, I think. Anyway, he's walk he welcome back to Kauai. Thanks, Tex. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Mike. Had you been on you. I'm, I'm glad to be here. This is my first Zoom meeting. Ah, wow. wow. That's great. And not Nancy. But Becky, if you could just take a quick moment to introduce Dwayne. Um, actually, I don't know if Dwayne is back yet. He went to get coffee. Oh, okay. Hey, good morning, Dwayne. We'll have you good do morning. a better introduction later on, Becky, but if you could just say who he is so that we know. Um, good morning, everyone. This is Dwayne Miyasoto from Kauai Community College. He is one of the professors there in their culinary arts program. Um, I've known him for, gosh, 10 years maybe since I've been yeah. here. Mm -hmm. uh, he's always treats me good when I go to lunch. So. Uh, <laughs> And thank you for your support. I, I'm delighted to have him and see him. Yeah. You know, Dwayne. Nice I to see you all. We, thank you. We've done a few of the lunches at your place. And I still say those are the best meals I've ever had on this island. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. I really appreciate it. They're, they're thank really, you. They're really good stuff. Okay. We're going to start out with a few announcements okay. because we actually have things to talk about now, which is great. Um, a little bit, bit before the meeting, we were discussing the fact that... Um, well, two things. One, I think we've been in, in mask land for long enough that we know what we can and cannot do. Um, and two, I think we're going to be in mask land for a little bit longer as well. So we're looking at setting up some projects that we can get going. And the first one is going to be at Kukuyolono. And we've talked about this for a while. But um, on Sunday, August 16th now, we're going to do the, pardon me, the pressure washing of the uh, pavilion walls and, and things so that we can get that prepped for painting. So that's going to be on the 16th. Um, Claude, my understanding is you're bringing your pressure washer up there. That and is correct. Awesome. And we'll get that all nice and, and, and really prepped up for a good paint job. And then the painting is going to take place on August 29th and 30th. And of course, um, we'll get some more information out about all of, uh, all of that and signups and everything. But um, the more people, the merrier because it makes everything go a little bit more smoothly, and it also plays very well into number five. Yeah, fun. So it gets us out there doing some stuff, and it, I think that will be really beneficial to the community. Um, I, I kind of have as a, as a plan to spend some more time with Robert at Kukuyolono and see what other projects we might be able to do with them this year. Um, it's, a, it's a really nice place. I know a lot of us go there. Um, I know I've seen many, many people on this call who have posted photos and videos and stuff from the park. So I know we all use it and it would be really nice if we were able to kind of bring it under our wings and, and make it a little bit nicer and a little bit, um, just a little bit nicer, I guess is the best way to put it. And then the other one is something that Claude had discussed with me before um, about a project with Habitat for Humanity. Claude, do you just want to take a moment and chat about, about that? Certainly. Um, yeah, we have a friend who is Leela's office manager who has just been awarded a home at uh, Habitat in LA LA. Uh, they started construction. They're just doing some preliminary priming and so forth. And so I thought it would be nice if we could do that as a service project. Uh, I know we've been talking about working with Milani and Habitat. So, um, I'm going to take the lead on that and see if I can set something up for uh, the near future. Awesome. Thank you for doing that. Um, and I should thank Rodney for setting up the, the work at Kooks because you know, he's been the one that's been in touch with Robert about that. Rodney, do you have anything to add about? Well, anyway, I, I'm, I'm sorry I not necessarily dropped the ball, but I had scheduled to go to Oahu. Uh, this weekend, and uh, didn't anticipate this quarantine thing 
Um, I was going back and forth whether I go to Oahu or not. And um, there's my lovely wife. Um, anyway, so when I come back, I'm actually going to be here for um, 14 days. Yeah. Quarantining up there at my office. Are you quarantining in your um, office? Other than that, um, I need to bring a, a, a part of my gate for the color to uh, a cloth so you can get it scanned for the color and uh, get the equipment back to Craig. And I think they're going to take over from there. Okay, awesome. Thank you for doing that. And yeah, the, the quarantine is, uh, is interesting. I, I was on the mainland and I flew home last night um, in Oahu, because of course I had to connect through Oahu. Um, they take down all your information. They verified my phone number by calling me, making me show them my phone to show that it was ringing. They even went and they asked if we rented or owned, and then they looked up the name of the property owner for the address that wow. I gave them. So, I mean, they're, they're taking it much more seriously there. The interesting thing was I had heard that we were doing pretty, uh, pretty heavy duty stuff here. It seemed pretty easy here in Kauai. They just had me fill out a form and then said, okay, bye. <laughs> so I'm going to see who calls me um, over the course of the next 14 days. But um, yeah, it, it's, uh, it was not expected that we'd be still in quarantine, but hey, we'll make it work. Um, I'm surprised if the National Guard shows up. <laughs> I'm, you know, if they do, they do. I, I'm, I'm, we're okay. We're not planning on breaking quarantine. So it's totally fine with me. I just had a experience with a friend who's going over for, to Oahu from Kauai for a PET scan. And uh, he filled out the state form and showed up. I told him, don't, don't just show up tomorrow morning. You're going to get stuck on Oahu. So he went and I said, go to the baggage claim and talk to the cops. And it turns out he needed a whole different form from the, uh, from the county. And uh, I think oh, for medical, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Hawaiian Airlines had a form that was online and I tried to fill it out, I believe it was Sunday. And they said, you can't fill it out until you're tw within 12 hours of the landing of your flight. So I said, okay, well, I'll do that. And, and just so y'all know, the, the various typos that were in my email yesterday were because I was sending that from the Denver airport. Um, while I was connecting planes. So I was just like, <laughs> so I missed a few things on there, but sorry about that. Um, but um, then I went online yesterday to fill it out and they had taken the form down because exactly what you said, they've changed forms. So it, yeah, it, it's interesting. Um, but yeah, we're ready for the National Guard, the cops, whoever, yeah, we'll be, we'll be ready to roll. Um, so back to Claude with Habitat, um, the, the three things I think that are, are really good about this. Um, one, obviously, helping someone in the community. And the fact that it is someone that, that Leela and Claude know is even m kind of more of a benefit to all of us. Um, the other, obviously, we have Milani as a member of our club, and she works uh, for Habitat, so it's a nice way of, of keeping that going. And then third, there is a partnership between Habitat for Humanity and Rotary, so it's a nice way of also furthering that. Um, as we're going through this year, obviously there's some service projects that we'll, we'll do that we do on a regular basis, like the highway cleanup and that. But um, if there is a service project that you have been looking at going, you know, someone ought to do this. Well, guess who someone is? It's us. So if, if you have something that you want to do, um, let's talk about it and, and we'll come up with a way to get things done. Um, I think this year is going to be a year that is just going to have to be dedicated more to the idea of doing service projects um, simply because of, of fundraising. Um, speaking of fundraising, actually, Ron, I'm going to put you on the spot. I apologize, I didn't ask you about this before. I know there's been some communication about the uh, moving the auction online, and I know there's a meeting set up, so just wanna give us a quick, quick overview. Yeah, before I do that, let me uh, uh, just speak to the uh, committee members that are online today. Um, the Zoom link that I sent you had a flaw in it, so please ignore that one. I will be sending out a, uh, a corrected one after our meeting this morning, and I'll be sending that to your email addresses. So the earlier one you received uh, a couple of days ago, delete that one, and there'll be a new one coming out.
probably within an hour after our meeting. Um, so the meeting uh, this afternoon is really to discuss the online auction uh, timing. Uh, Claude has been working with the businesses that provided us with certificates uh, and trying to get a sense from them of are they still in business, what's their overall approach, et cetera. Uh, and not surprisingly, a lot of them are, are still very anxious and really can't commit to a whole lot at this point. Uh, and we certainly understand that. And, uh, but we do have actual products in hand that we could put on the auction. And what the committee is going to be discussing tonight is do we move ahead with the online auction for the in-hand products, or do we wait uh, and put everything online at one point once we have a sense from uh, the businesses that are providing certificates? Um, the downside uh, to waiting uh, is that even if a business indicates, yes, we're going to be fine, we're going to do this, they could literally be out of business the following month. Um, and so we need, we need to deal with that in the committee discussion tonight. Yep. Uh, but then I'll, I, I'll be able to give a little more information at next week's meeting about how we're going to proceed, what the potential timeline is, uh, and any of the other pieces of that. Thanks, Question, Ron. Ron. Yeah, Craig. Uh, do you have the dollar amounts of what all these people donated? Yeah, Claude has that. And okay. uh, that's, you know, the dollar amount is uh, is a nice number. Uh, it doesn't mean we're going to get that on the uh, auction. Um, well, I'll, my question was, if these businesses close, we have to refund the purchaser's amount. So just wondering if we had those amounts, those bid sheets still. Well, well do you want to speak to received that? Any, any physical money from the from our customers other than those that gave us products. Is that right, Ron? We have, yeah, I mean, we have products in hand, uh, and those are the ones that, regardless of whether that business is in business oh, or okay. not, we can auction. Well, we, we have gift certificates from uh, businesses and certificates for <laughs> services and things like that. Okay. And each one of those certainly has a value attached to it. Um, but those are those are those items that are within the second level of discussion um, and do we move ahead with what we have in hand and secure hopefully uh, a fair amount of money for those products uh, and then at a later point if we feel comfortable putting the gift certificates and service certificates up for auction then that would probably be a part two okay but that is a good point, Craig. If uh, if we have someone who buys a gift certificate at the auction, once we do put them out there, yes, right. it is. We still have to understand yeah. that it's possible that that business will go out of business between yeah. the time that they make the purchase and the time that they actually get a chance to use it. So. Right, and then we have to also uh, have the working um, assumption that whatever an individual bid for a gift certificate with that business out of business then we potentially are going to have to give that refund. Right. So this has made things much more complex, but you know, it's just, it's just part of the game now. So we'll yeah. figure things out. Um, all right, any other member announcements? Anything from you guys? I have one thing I need to add, and that's that uh, we will be power washing the pavilion this Sunday, uh, nine o'clock. Thank you. Yeah. We had tried for Saturday, but the pavilion is uh, booked. So nine o'clock. Um, I, I won't be there because I'm in quarantine, but uh, others are welcome to join. I got a, uh, can I pull the members that are here? So for our actual painting project um, at the end of the month, the 29th, 30th, 29th, 30th yeah. one of the days, would you want the club to make arrangements for lunch yes. or everyone bring their own. But I was thinking maybe pitching in 10 or $15 each and then catering from Marcy. Uh, yeah, let's do that. That sounds and, great. Okay. Yeah. What do other people, raise your hand if you're in favor. 
I'll, I'll be bringing my own. Okay. Yeah, the only thing I, weekend. I'd suggest is it, it should be individually um, packaged and not a buffet. Oh, okay. That's fine. I can. Oh, yeah, definitely. To, to comply with health, health guidelines. Okay. We can do that. Okay. And on Sunday, we will serve individual beers <laughs> after the project. That's been prepackaged, right? <laughs> yes, correct. Prepackaged, huh? Yeah. Rodney? Yeah, so um, last year, um, this is about the trade scholarships. Um, last year, um, we didn't do it. Uh, and so this year, hopefully, we can pick it up and do it. Um, I'm assuming we still have the funds from last year or, or not or to do it. Uh, so I, I guess what I'm doing is asking for some help to uh, uh, do it this year. Um, getting kind of busy at work. And um, so if anybody would like to help me out with that, um, and I don't know what's happening in school too. So, um, and no, no outside civilians. You're kind of the perfect lead in that for a speaker, you know? Yeah. Right. So, um, anyway, Hey Joe, how you doing? Good. I'm on the mainland, so I won't be able to show up there for any of those things. And then I'll be in quarantine when I get back. I'm glad to hear that Joe. Cause I saw your truck at work the other day. I was going to turn you in, but I didn't. It's good that you didn't turn me. That would have been embarrassing for the guy driving the truck. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let me know if anybody wants to help me. Okay, Mike? Hey, that Kauai Kids in Crisis, I followed up on that. and Working on an online program like a clearinghouse. And still working on that one. Apparently, the Office of Economic Development. Nalani Brune has something going on, too, because I talked to Roger Jacobs, my guy, who is already working on a project for Nalani, and I said, hey, maybe those guys can fund it for us. But putting, putting uh, something online to where we can offer our services and satisfy some needs. Anyway, online clearinghouse for that Kauai Kids in Crisis services. Still working on it. Yeah. It's a big work in progress, but and there's a lot of people involved, too, so I got a lot of information back after that meeting that in addition to that. So anyway, Kauai Kids in Crisis is still a project for us and ongoing. I'll let you know what's going on. Good deal. Thank you so much. Um, Mike's done a lot of work on this. And, and actually, Mike, I want to acknowledge also, uh, Mike put together the Palhana last week. And oh, yeah. uh, we went and uh, hung out at Brennecke's and had some socially distanced beverages and appetizers, which is always nice. So thank you for putting that together. And Welcome. Yeah, it, it is nice sometimes to just see people in person. Um, instead of on Zoom. Zoom is good, but in-person is good too. So. Is it Brennecke's felt like outdoors and it was comfortable? Very nice. Yeah, good deal. Okay, um, Becky, I'm going to ask you to introduce our speaker. Okay, once again, it's my pleasure to introduce Dwayne Miyasoto. Dwayne is in the professor in the culinary arts program at Kauai Community College. He's sort of the champion of the front of the house, although I know he's worked both sides. So he's always there showing the students how to serve, how to, our, his biggest challenge is helping them figure out how to open and pour wine. Uh, but he's always giving them information about how they should act when they are in the front of the house. Um, but I know he has many contacts in the back of the house as well. And he's gonna tell us how their program is gonna proceed this fall. So welcome, Dwayne. Thank you. Thank you, Becky, and uh, thank you for reaching out to me um, to uh, share an, an update of what's happening here at the college. Um, thank you all. Good morning to all of you. Thank you um, for allowing me to be here today um, to speak of our culinary arts program. And of course, thank you to the um, Rotary Club of Hoipu Beach for always um, their continuous support of our culinary arts program. Um, I'm going to kind of just do an overview of what's been happening with our program. Um, Chef Steve Nakata is our program coordinator. He's been attending um, the meetings that's been happening on campus, but I can provide you um, with you, you know, a good amount of information of what's going on. Um, first of all, I'd like to mention that Chef Martina Hildorfer has retired as of July 31st. So, you know, we wish her the best uh, retirement, uh, enjoyable one. Now she can relax. 
Um, I believe she was at the uh, Kauai Community College for around 16 or 17 years, and she will be greatly missed. With that said, um, going into, um, I'm going to talk a bit about last spring semester, what had happened when COVID came upon us, is uh, we were just starting our final eight-week module um, of the program, and that's a very intensive one where Chef Mark Oyama has his practicum course, um, and that's like the final lab class for the students before graduation. And then myself, I have the dining room and beverage service, which is the second semester for the first year students. So that's their first experience in the dining room. So what happened was the first week, so we're talking about the ninth week, I was able to get all the training in front of the house training for them because we were going to go into service um, right after spring break. Um, and then all of a sudden we got shut down and that's when the stay at home orders came about. And um, I was fortunate enough to do enough training with them to get some experience, but then everything had to be taught remotely. Um, so Chef Mark had a, a difficult challenge and, and it was unfortunate that the second year students that were to graduate didn't, wasn't able to, to participate in his um, semester project, which is one of the most intense projects that we, um, that is said to be with the culinary programs across the system, because they have to run their own restaurant, they have to design their own menu, they have to basically, everything is handed over to them, create their own work schedule, do their own ordering, design the restaurant, and that never happened, sadly. Um, so Chef Mark had to figure out how he was gonna assess them remotely, and that's how he had to continue. As for me, so Chef Mark had a hands-on experience class, I had a hands-on experience class, and believe me, um, there was much stress because now I had to transition into everything theory, you know, follow the whole textbook. I had to design all new PowerPoints um, to deliver um, my, my class content to the students remotely. And it was synchronous too. So um, we followed the same class time. Um, students had to come in. We used the Zoom pl platform um, and that continued on for seven weeks. Um, you know, I, I was blessed with <laughs> all the students, you know, we hear stories, but all the students showed up for their course um, on time. Um, usually it's a Monday, it's an everyday course, Monday through Friday. But what I did was, um, because it was just uh, uh, covering the textbook, I went Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I was able to cover the 10 chapters. Um, sadly, I depend on a lot of um, guest speakers to focus in on, on specialized areas. Um, Donna Wilcox comes in and does a wine 101. I have um, Cecil Baleares and Ken Herman from um, liquor, um, the Liquor Control um, Office to come in and talk to students about um, rules and regulations of uh, safe alcohol service and then we also go out into the community i visit we visit um chef ben at club at kukuyula we go to the eating house we've gone to roots chris just to have the students listen to our industry um, um partners out there and give them an idea of of what happens and that never happened um so unfortunately we missed a lot you know and even one of the requirements for my for my dining room and beverage classes um to be cpr and first aid certified and we weren't even able to accomplish that so we're planning on doing that in, into the fall um, other things that happened in the spring so along with chef mark chef martina still was able to finish her um, human and resource management course so she had to do that also remotely um, all students did graduate um, it's just unfortunate they didn't uh, they weren't able to participate in an actual graduation ceremony. Um, they are looking at possibly having that ceremony in December so the students can uh, get that full experience. Um, so yes, we did, you know, so what had happened and then the, the, what also happened is right before we went into that lockdown, we did our interviews for Chef Martina's position and we came up with a decision and we were gonna, um, present it to the, to the applicant and ask if they accept. 
and then the hiring freeze went into place. So, you know, a, a lot of things has happened. We know that hiring freeze, um, we just had a meeting yesterday and they said with all the, the budget shortfalls and what's gonna happen, it could take up to, I know this sounds drastic, but it could take up to five years for us to recover. Now I'm thinking if we're not gonna have a new instructor from three to five years, I mean, it, it's, it's a big burden because what's happening is Chef Marco Yama, Chef Steve Nakata and myself have to cover Chef Martina's workload. And that's what's been a bit stressful is that I'm taking on a new course I've never taught. So I've been preparing every day during the summer. There's no summer. It's just preparations for instruction. Um, the, let's see, so what's, what also, okay, let's talk about spring, some um, fall semester upcoming. So, oh, and then the other thing too is what happened with our new cohort, a new cohort always starts in the fall. Last academic school year was a very unusual year where our numbers are very, very low. An incoming cohort usually starts off between 19 to 21 students. Last year's cohort only had nine that entered the cohort. And then one student actually uh, withdrew and went into another discipline. So we were left with eight. Now, as a cohort, we move along and we do not, you, we do not add any new st students at any time. So that eight will continue on. So that's what's actually happening. So going into um, the fall, the second year students in their third semester, um, actually has now dropped down to seven. One student has notified me that she had to move to the mainland with her parents, so she's gonna stay there. So now there's only seven. Um, as, you, as those who know, Becky knows, comes into the dining room. Um, in the fall, Chef Mark does his Kaneno and Asian cuisine. Um, it's his course, so in other words, with that seven students, and then he puts a couple students out in the front of the house and we operate the restaurant. Sadly, because of the limited visitation um, on campus, we are actually going to have the culinary arts restaurant close to the community. There's been talk about being able to service just campus people, whether it be students, faculty, or staff, but we're still trying to decide that because President Lassner's message is that he um, emphasizes whatever work can be done, which includes staff to be done at home. So which even reduces more presence on campus. So, you know, I mean, Chef Mark has, has you know, made a strong statement that the students need to have that hands-on component and have that pressure of running a live restaurant. You know, I mean, to go all to all the pressure, whether it's front of the house and back of the house, all the timing issues, you know, how you're gonna handle different situations, students haven't been able to experience that yet. And if they don't, if they don't, if they're not able to experience that, say if we go into um, a total lockdown, um, how can we actually put a tag on them with a degree from the culinary arts program without reaching those competencies or student learning outcomes? I, I may have um, spoken a little bit early, but um, premature, but I want to also say what President Lassner has actually said. I'm going to see if I can share screen this. I'm not sure. You may have heard it on the news. Oh, okay, I can't share screen. Um, CTE programs, nursing, um, some art labs, um, other gen ed labs that requires hands-on learning are exempt to have face-to-face -face instruction, provided they have to follow all CDC guidelines um, regarding, requiring um, safety, sanitation, all the, the health guidelines. So our culinary program actually will be able to um, proceed with face-to-face -face instruction, or we actually filed as hybrid, where we can do face-to-face -face as well as teach remotely. Now, I can't share my, uh, do my share screen, but yesterday we had to fill out um, a form listing our courses um, and whether they're a lecture or a lecture lab and putting in a re request if we can do the face-to-face. -face. Now, I have two lecture courses and a lecture lab. I'm not sure if they're gonna agree to allow me to have just a lecture 
course face to face or I need to do a zoom platform. I mean, a video uh, web conferencing platform. My justification is that it's a seven o'clock to 750 class. And then in 10 minutes at eight o'clock, they go into a lab class, which they'd have to be here on campus. So we're hoping that they'll allow us to do that. The other thing, so going in um, with our area, our space, I'm actually in the classroom right now, we determined that a maximum of eight students can be present, physically present, um, because of you know, adhering to the six foot distancing. Um, the second year students, there's gonna be seven, so Chef will be fine in the kitchen, and in the kitchen lab, he has to do all his um, um, safety guidelines, and then I have them in a lecture lab, so that will be fine. But the new cohort that's coming in this fall, we actually have 11 students right now, which means, and just something to think, think this out, is that I'm gonna have eight students present that will be allowed face-to-face -face if they allow me, and then the other three students will be having to zoom, um, go on my web conferencing platform at the same time, and I'm gonna be conducting class so it's it's going to be a challenge trying to conduct class to two separate audiences Phys those that are in the classroom and three that'll be following me via the the platform so there's a lot of work that's going to be going on chef steve also has a lecture with nutrition um so that's kind of like what we're where we're at right now as as far as that um we did having that chef martina's workload couldn't be fully covered we have block scheduling so our introductory courses and that's a certificate of competence in food prep now this is intro courses that's not part of the cohort and these are for students that may want to get a, te a, a taste of um, culinary or those that actually haven't met the math and english requirements to enter the cohort they're put into this um, category, this introduction courses, we cancel those. So there's actually um, two separate eight week modules run in the fall and the spring. And because we don't have enough coverage for that, we, ha we had to make that decision to suspend those courses for now. So we're just gonna, you know, proceed with the cohort um, courses we do not know what's going to be going on in the spring um, just yet you know i mean and for us doing the face-to-face -face instruction right now if we're allowed to um we also have to have a backup plan on on you know should a, um, a lockdown happen a stay-at-home order um, we're going to just revert back to just remote teaching only um i think you know that's pretty much what I wanted to cover. Um, I'm sorry if that was a, a little information overload, but um, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that any of you may have. And I hope that gave you at least some insight into what's what's happening here with our program. I got a question. Absolutely. Um, so what the new norm now with uh, existing restaurants happening, some of them closing down, some of them, some of them uh, you know, going, you know, different methods, less people and all that. Have you got any insight on, you know, the future? You know, um, I, I seen, I, I seen, now don't, don't, don't take a uh, quote me on this, but I seen um, someone post up uh, a message and actually they were reaching out to um, some of our um Legislative, legis, legislative people and whatnot, but well, it was mentioned that um, they've done, they've ran some some numbers, and you know whether it's it's accurate or not is they're looking at possibly sixty percent, you know, sixty percent of of you know possible industry um, restaurants may be closing down, you know, if this continues. Um, me as Nancy, I've worked with Nancy. I'm still part of the eating. House. House 1849 staff. Actually, they didn't let me go because of what had happened. But I've been there for 23 years. This was my first summer in 23 years with a Royce restaurant that I wasn't able to work during the summer. Um, 
we have students, you know, students that are out in industry. Um, one of our students was at the Hyatt at, at Don Darrow's and um, it's painful, you know, being in the industry, teaching, you know, about industry, it, it, it's so painful to, to see that my friends and my people that are my, you know, those in industry along with me um, are out of work, you know, and um, it's, and believe me, I hear, I hear it more than often is they want to go back to work. So where are we headed? Um, numbers, it comes down to numbers, you know, um, Becky, thank you. Um, O'Donna Wilcox reached out to me. One of our graduates last year went to Kalaheo Steakhouse and got hired. And then sadly, um, Caroline, Caroline, I believe, they have to shut down. And that's right up the road from me. I know that was a great restaurant. So um, we know Roots Chris had to shut down. Um, for me, I look at Kukuyula um village and and I, i'm not aware fully aware of what the overhead is but you kind of wonder how they can you know make a goal um without the without the tourist industry you know happening you know i mean that's why there's pushing so much to support local and um hopefully we can get more people out but then now people are a lot more cautious and going out as well even for myself i'm one that likes to go out and, and be out on the town or go you know just to get out of the house i find myself being at home more often than not so um, Dwayne, yes Dwayne, farm to yes. table is really popular these days and uh, my sister has a uh, a farm cafe going on in new york are you interfacing with the agricultural department with the uh, with the garden, or is the garden still there at K KCC? We we did. Um, there is the oh gosh, what was it? Uh, you know, and I'm sorry, I, I don't know the name. They were Go farm. in operation. I'm sorry. Go farm. Go farm. Yeah, Go farm. Okay. Um, as far go farm with our program you know she came and 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 talked to us um the only thing as far just for us with our program it was um the numbers the amounts and the type of variety that we were um would be requesting um would be a limited amount you know and then also you eat system, I'm just gonna be honest, the payment system is such a challenge just to set up a payment system. And, you know, we wanted to support it as much as we could, but it never kind of materialized. At one point it was working where they were providing lettuce and certain vegetables for the cafeteria service. Um, but then that kind of faded away. But as for the dining room, it's a lot more challenging um, because Chef only puts in small orders, very small orders of, of product, and he uses a large variety of product. Um, but not to say that it's, it, it, it can't happen in the future. Um, we want to have that continuous um, conversation with them. I actually went to um, Hawaii Community College and visited visited their, their um, farm and they had a great um, instructor and someone that was running the farm and their collaboration with the culinary program was uh, a step above and we kind of came back and we, we wanted to look in how we could um, initialize or get that started but things kind of again faded away we didn't have enough support but um, not to say that it's not in the making or definitely um, We'll continue the conversation and keep that going. And thank you for mentioning that. Thanks. I have a question. Uh, yes. I was wondering if there's a track in your training on um, catering and takeout delivery uh, um, type of careers, because it seems like that that seems to be the wave of the future now. You know, the, uh, that's a that, that's a great um, a, a good a, a good point that you bring up is um, you know prior before this you know there wasn't I, I'm not gonna say there wasn't but not as much emphasis um, I can say you know within the past five to seven years I know the trend was going to a lot of food trucks 
right? Mobile restaurants. So that was going in that direction. Um, I can tell you right now, because I teach the introduction to culinary industry. That's a new cohort that's coming in. And thank you for mentioning that, because I'm going to include that in my curriculum is, you know, I mean, that will probably, like you say, the wave of the future for now, you know, um, if we're not, if this is how long this continue until we can get that vaccine, um, dine in will be very limited. So catering and takeout um, is going to be a, a, a vital um, business that will definitely be an important role in the in the industry. Um, I'm not sure, you know, I, I, even though I work with Chef Mark, um, we haven't talked much. I, I'm curious to see what has happened actually with his catering business as well. In addition to all that's going on, all the catering companies on Kauai, um, that's a big hit, you know. And again, when I hear this, it's painful, you know. And, and one thing I want to mention too is that for our program, we participate in a lot of um, events, community events, WIPA Foundation. Um, theirs always happens in late August or early September. We participate in theirs. Of course, the Poipu Beach Foundation, um, that was a big one. Chef Mark was, Chef Mark was actually bringing in a two Michelin star chef um, oh. that was going to be one of the headline chefs. Oh. Um, I can't remember her name. Shoot, I just saw her, her um, show too. Um, she was on Top Chef as one of the judges, but that was going to be a big one. And now I can, you know, I mean, he had asked me to be on the planning committee and I didn't get any call. So, you know, I can pretty much say that anything that's happening for the fall is pretty much out the door right now, unfortunately. And when we do participate in these events, it's actually, um, um, they actually provide scholarship money for our program as well. So, you know, it's, it's such a challenging situation and um, we just hope that we can recover soon and, and industry can get back in because I want to go back to work. I miss work, believe me. Um, I can work at the restaurant when I'm not teaching and um, that was kind of my home away from home and Roy was so good to me. So I definitely miss, but thank you so much for mentioning that. I will incorporate that into my curriculum as well. Uh, Blaine? You got one yes. for you? Hi, so great. first all right, so first of all, my son Matthew says hi from Pullman. Oh great. And thank you very Aloha. much. Donovan's happy. Yeah. And then uh, can you share how your program prepped for our one fine evening? Because we gave you one day's notice that we weren't having <laughs> it. So what happened? And what Yeah, what so um they, it Chef Steve actually had done the desserts. You know, he had the students um, do all the preparations. And um, it, it was, because I was in contact, I, I believe it was with, with Kristen. And um, I told Chef Steve, I haven't heard anything yet. So, you know, I'm assuming it's a go. So why don't we just go ahead and go for it? And I think Chef prepared, because usually he prepares between 600 to 800 portions. And uh, I, believe he was it a, a panna cotta or a Bavarian that he made as well as he makes his um, uh, chocolate bread pudding so that was done it was ready to go and and you know we understand totally what it, you know I mean the situation that had happened but um, all the food was ready to go and the students we had them all ready and then I gave them that um, last minute that sadly unfortunately that we you folks had to uh, put off that event, suspend that event. And of course, we always look forward to one fine evening. It's, it, it's a great event and the students really enjoy themselves. Um, sorry that it happened, you know, and we know that's a, a big part of the Rotary Club of Poipu Beach uh, fundraising as well. Um, got our fingers crossed that uh, we can continue in um, the spring, spring of 21. Thank you. So um, I'd like to kind of jump in here. For those of you that don't know, we usually give three $2,000 uh, scholarships to second year culinary students. Um, I've had the opportunity to talk to Joe Daisy, the new chancellor at KCC and this spring and summer. And um, I have to tell you that, you know, because a lot of the students weren't able to work during that last semester and probably during the summer, um, they, there was a lot of financial need. Um, they were able to get some money, I think, through the CARES Act, mm -hmm. as I understand it. Um, but, you know, they're not able to work part-time 
to kind of continue to raise money. So um, I'm hoping that the board, when it considers this, will still consider offering these scholarships. I know it's a, they have to agree on their budget and figure out what they want to fund for the coming year. But um, I just want to tell you the financial need is there and it's probably greater than it has been um, in the past. So I just want to throw that out there. Thank you for your consideration, Becky. Really appreciate that. Um, it, it is true that our students, I, I think this cohort, this particular cohort, um, so there's going to be seven students, I believe, um, at least six or maybe all seven were actually out in industry. And um, they got, um, sadly, when it shut down, they lost their job. So um, hopefully, I'm not sure, I haven't been in contact fully with them, but hopefully they were able to collect their unemployment. So, but um, we'll find out when they get back. So we're, resume, we're set to resume on August 24th. So uh, that's the first day of instruction. So that's what we're set to do. Yeah. Just, just Dwayne. Uh, yes, hi, Tom. Program, hi. Uh, just to uh, let you know that Safeway is looking for people in the bakery. Oh, okay. So okay. if you've got somebody who's good with that, you they could get a job pretty quickly, I think. Oh, you know, that um, again, Rena that went to Kaleo Steakhouse and then she was still looking for work and that was one of our graduates. So I'll mention that to her. I'll text her right yeah. after this. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm sorry. What was her name, by the way? Uh, Rena Takabayashi. Rena. Okay. Rena. Yeah. I'll go, I'll go let her know. Thank you. Yep. Um, okay. Any other questions? If not, um, thank you very much. Really appreciate for um, having you allowing me to be here to share uh, uh, updates of what's been happening with our culinary arts program. Um, again, as we always say, thank you to Rotary Club of Hoibu Beach for their continuous support of our culinary arts program. So thank you very much. And you all have a, a good day. Stay safe, please, and stay healthy. Thank you. Thanks, Dwight. Thank you. Thanks, Dwight. Thank, <clears throat> thank you, Nancy. And as Becky mentioned, we do um, fund some scholarships for the culinary students. So this is a, an area that um, obviously we, we, we have a lot of ties with. So the more we can do for them, I think the better there. Um, any final announcements before we let you all go? Yeah, I just, I, I just <laughs> want to mention something uh, that uh, I read in, I think it was Honolulu Magazine that Mary had uh, pointed out to me about the origins of coffee in Hawaii. And the original coffee plants came from Santa Catarina, Brazil, which is where our exchange student Evelyn Duarte uh, hails from. So uh, it was uh, really, so all the coffee, all Kona coffee and all that, that all came from Brazil and from a little island off the coast of Santa Catarina. And I just found that to be kind of fun. That's neat when you can make those sorts of connections. And that was really cool, Tom, that you had the job, that you're like, hey, we need someone. That's, yeah. that's a fantastic okay. thing. I, yeah. I hope that works out. Yeah, not Rodney. That's yeah. Not Rodney. <laughs> Hi, sorry, it keeps changing. Sometimes I'm Jam Pasqua, sometimes I'm Roddy, I don't know. Anyway, uh, I know you didn't have time for Happy Bucks, but I just want to shout out a $10 Happy Buck. Tomorrow is our grandson's first birthday. Hey. hey. And that's why Rodney's going over to Oahu. Pretty right. Much. Oh, is he in quarantine already? <laughs> so, okay. Well, not like yet. Before you go, I'd like to chime in. I will write a check to the uh, endowment fund. Um, this Saturday is Richard's and my 50th wedding anniversary. Oh, wow. Oh, congratulations. So, Craig, I'll be sending you a check. Hey. Pretty awesome. Party. Party. <laughs> <laughs> congratulations. That's great. Anything else? The second 50 is the hard one. <laughs> Well, Tom, Dick will tell you that it's been four of the best years of his life. <laughs> and not necessarily in order. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, um, Tex and Waylon, thank you for joining us. Um, yeah. And we look forward to seeing you at other meetings. And for all the rest of us, thank you as well. And we will see you all next Wednesday.
Thanks for well, having me, you guys. Aloha. 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 Bye, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you.